the head of a state within a state. For here, he is monarch over all except his king. The host of visiting kings and foreign dignitaries. One of a line unbroken for 700 years. The Lord Mayor of London. Presiding at this, his common council. A parliament older than Westminster. Honourable members, kindly take their places. Domine dirige nos. The Court of Common Council is the city's own parliament, with powers unequalled in the kingdom. By its acts, the Lord Mayor, Aldermen and Commons guide the affairs of their one square mile. At the Old Bailey, an alderman must sit at every session. Thus, the Common Council plays its part in the administration of justice. The city constable is a member of an independent force, though working in unison with the national police. Smithfield, Billingsgate, Spitalfields and Islington. The maintenance of these markets is the city's responsibility. Open spaces, streets and sewers, for even after the Lord Mayor's show must come the Corporation Cleansing Department. But one task above all was the Common Council's purpose and is its aim. The perpetuation of all that is best of the city's historic past. The city is of the world and suffers with the world. But the city's true greatness, the integrity of its people, this has stood against all that the centuries have brought against it. Amid the bustle of the modern city, the old crafts still linger on. Living symbols of all that the city stands for. Experience and fine workmanship. The skill that only years can bring. Passed on from generation to generation. The skill of the craftsman, though working to live, yet in his heart, working for the love of it. By hammer and hand, all arts do stand, 1659. The city's guilds and companies of craftsmen are the direct survivals of the ancient trades of London. Their objects, fellowship, charity, and the guarding of quality. And the standards of the guilds are kept and assessed by craftsmen. Weighing, testing, and passing judgment so that only the best can bear the stamp. Only the best can bear the hallmark. And in the hall of the guilds, the standards of all are protected by the council born of the guilds, by a democratic parliament stamping its acts of common council with its seal. The seal that symbolizes the best, the standards of eye and hand, of feel and touch, of taste and flavor the seal of the city of London. These are the standards which have made this city the center of accepted craftsmanship, whether it be in the shaping of silver or in the deft handling of insurance. By apprenticeship and experience, each has learned his trade, and integrity is a quality carefully guarded. Directors of the Baltic are voting for a would-be member by secret ballot, a method given by the city to the world. Each places a ball inside the box, dropping it into one of two compartments. Only if the vote is unanimous can the candidate be accepted. Will the verdict be yea or nay? And so another gains his right to trade vouched for by his fellow craftsmen. 
So on the floors of the exchanges, business flows freely. For there, each knows the other's integrity. For it has been measured and matched to his own. And there, each must think well. For his too is the hallmark, the stamp of the City of London. Standards and quality depend on people, lasting only because they will it. Through people, these things must last tomorrow, for in this ever-changing world, quality is wealth indeed.